This week in Jamaica now, Riverton on fire again. Smoke blankets the corporate area. Schools get permission to close early. Finance minister announces tax increase on gas, cigarettes and some light bills. Chained in a cellar, St. Anne couple remanded for mistreating mentally challenged girl. And why the nation weeps, children face more abuse from adults. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. Enter the Gleaners LED TV promotion for a chance to win one of 13 LED TVs from now until December. Get your copy of the Gleaner, complete the entry form, and mail to the Gleaners LED TV promotion. Care of the Gleaner Company, 7 North Street. Check the Gleaner for more details. The Gleaner, where life unfolds. Authorized under Section 58.3 of the Betting, Gaming, and Lotteries Act. I'm Carleen Brown and this is Jamaica Now. There was more weeping last week over incidents of abuse of the nation's children. The Office of the Children's Advocate has revealed it has received reports that several children are being sexually abused by senior members of the clergy. The church has condemned the reported abuse. Describing the reports as appalling, Reverend Dr. Clinton Chisholm, a lecturer at the Jamaica Theological Seminary, said he has no sympathy for anyone who sexually violates the innocence of a child. But the children's advocate says many of the cases go nowhere because the victims are unwilling to go to court with the matter. And the president of the Jamaica Council of Churches, Everald Galbraith, says the church should provide a safe environment for children. Meanwhile, a St. Anne couple is facing the possibility of additional charges for keeping their daughter chained to the cellar of their house. 39-year-old laborer Gerald Campbell and his common-law wife, 42-year-old shopkeeper Melody Murphy, were remanded last week when they appeared in court on charges of negligence at common law. Police investigators also indicated to the court that they are still probing the matter with a view to laying more charges against the couple. It is alleged that the young girl was fed like an animal in the cellar of the house. And last week, Patrick Green, the 27-year-old Clarendon man who pleaded guilty to the 2012 rape of five females in Irwin Point, St. James, was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Green was already serving time for similar offenses committed in Clarendon. He was arrested and charged last year after his DNA matched samples police investigators found at the Irwin Point crime scene. Two brothers were initially prosecuted for the crime but were later freed after DNA tests did not return a match. On September 24, 2012, men armed with guns invaded a house with five females, including an eight-year-old girl. The females were taken to an open lot where they were sexually assaulted. It was a rough few days, especially for people with respiratory illnesses last week, as city officials battled yet another massive fire at the Riverton City Dump. The smoke blanketed sections of the corporate area and St. Catherine and forced the Education Ministry to issue permission for the closure of schools adversely affected. The fire started on Wednesday and by Thursday had significantly spread with disaster officials appealing for D9 and D10 tractors to help in covering the dump. At the same time, people were being encouraged to remain indoors as much as possible to avoid inhaling the smoke. And visibility was reduced on Spanish Town Road and the Mandela Highway in the vicinity of the dump. The Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips last week announced new taxes as the government seeks to plug a $10 billion shortfall in the budget. Among the increases will be a jump in the special consumption tax SCT on cigarettes. It will be going up from $10 per stick to $12. And the specific SCT on fuel will be going up by $7 per litre. At the same time, the finance minister says residential customers will now have to pay GCT on the consumption of power above 350 kilowatt hours. Meanwhile, the executive director of the National Integrity Action, NIA, Professor Trevor Monroe, has called for Jamaica's international partners to pressure the government to pass tough laws to crack down on large companies that evade the tax net. Professor Monroe said in the same way international partners used their influence to get Jamaica to act on the illicit lottery scamming, they should also focus on tax evasion and corruption. Professor Monroe made the call as he addressed the inaugural fraud and anti-corruption conference put on by the Office of the Contractor General. 
And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Carlene Brown and as we go, we bring you more images from a dump on fire and a city under smoke. <laughs>